Oh, Karen, you've got it exactly right. Uh, and look at those storm clouds hanging about. It's been something we have talked about for the last couple of days. And these cars certainly don't need any moisture on the track. They are big, they are heavy, they are fast. They make the right noises and they run out of brakes. At 15 laps, Peter Brock, expect all of that to happen. Yes, and the boys are pretty well tuned up from uh, yesterday's race. Uh, the, the, in fact, the grid positions have been uh, reset for this race. Uh, boys like uh, Alan Grice back in the pack, we've been watching him. Uh, Bradley Jones up the front there, Charlie O'Brien, Jimmy Richards, all those great names of Australian racing and they're going for it. Well, organisers very wisely said yesterday that to take it easy off the start finish line from the rolling start, remember a rolling start here on the streets of the Gold Coast, into those first two chicanes. They don't want carnage. Let's have a look at the grid for you. Charlie O'Brien, the local boy, sitting up there on pole. Jimmy Richards, sensational yesterday in the Oscar and the NASCAR. Then Brad Jones, big improver, had troubles all over the weekend so far. Kim Jane sitting beside him. Barry Graham, Max Dumsey are there. Robert Best and Giles are sitting beside him. Adam Pay had a real big shunt the other day. Congratulations on getting the car there. Cook, Gross and Freestone. Taylor, Howland, Alan Grice. Look where he is, Alan Grice, coming from the rear of the grid along with Mead. So Alan Grice should have a little bit of aggression going today. Oh, Grice, he'd be waiting for... And, and you mentioned Taylor, that's Doug Taylor. Uh, a United States driver out here, very fast motor car, and he will be giving Gricey heaps too. So there's a couple of real hot shots back in the mid pack, and John Fork, the two our, what, our fastest qualifier. Well, we're looking there out of the uh, the windscreen of Brad Jones's car, and we'll get a comment from Peter Brock as Jonesy comes around because he really has improved his position greatly. Brad Jones, can you hear me, Peter Brock here? Hi, Brocky. How's it going, mate? Fantastic. Looks like a uh, little bit of rain coming up the right-hand side there. Well, if it rains, it rains. I, I think it'll stay away, but uh, I know there's a few drips on the screen before, so we'll see what happens. OK, mate. Good luck to you. Thanks. See ya. All set for a rolling start here. 15 laps, 4.495 kilometres around race distance, 67.425. And Gerald McDormand, this is a long way to go for these cars. The, the uh, pit car's off. The pace car's gone. Here we go. I think they'll take it pretty easy to the first chicane. Lots of horsepower, lots of size, and there'll be plenty of biff and barge as this gets going. Now they come. Well, Gerald, anything can happen here. It certainly can, and it can, Darrell, and it might be the first ever time on wet weather tyres for some of these guys if the rain does come. Yes, of course, normally not fitted with windscreen wipers. That's all changed this year. It certainly has after the biff and barge of last year, so the guys taking it nice and easy through the chicane with Charlie O'Brien leading. Charlie O'Brien down there with Jimmy Richards. I'll get through this area, then the boots will go in. Don't worry about that. They sound fantastic, these cars, around the canyons here at Surface Paradise. So Charlie O'Brien gets it pumped up and going now. Jimmy Richards is there. We'll watch for Brad Jones. That's him in the Castrol car. The white car, the green and red and black. Thundering down here now. Through they go, making their way up to the beachfront straight. Well, Van Jones is in a much better position. Remember Alan Grice starting way back in the pack. This is round five of the championship. After four rounds, Max Dumsey leads on 335 points from Terry Byers on 335. John Laws on 315. Alan Grice on 313. And Adam Pay, who had the accident here the other day, on 285. So important points up here for grabs. Certainly is the points up for grabs and Robin Best, the two-time champion, and uh, George Elliott, the reigning champion, not uh, in there at the moment. Well, they, they've really uh, got stuck into it now. They were told to take it pretty easy there, down the first uh, straight there, but Jimmy Richards already attacking Charlie O'Brien. But uh, Charlie, I can tell you, has got a very fast motor car and he's driving extremely well. Watch them come through the chicanes here, kissing the curbs, caressing everything they can. Lose one of these cars here and you've got to have a problem with a wall. Lots of damage has been caused, but to credit to everybody, they keep them going. Charlie O'Brien now lets the horsepower unleashed. I'll make their way back onto the start, finish straight. Then we'll see some action through the chicane. This is a tricky part of the circuit. Up through the S-bends. Got to keep it together here, but keep your momentum to get your speed on the straight. And absolutely big hulking motor cars. This is the hairpin corner coming onto the straight. You can see it now as the spots of uh, rain showing up there. And boy, those drivers will be noticing every little spot that's showing on the windshield. Charlie O'Brien entering the main straight. Jimmy Richards second. 
Brad Jones in third, and already a little bit of a gap for the rest of the field. These boys are going for it. The big boom is going down now as Charlie O'Brien, the local driver here from Queensland, Surface Paradise, been a local resident for a long time, through the chicane now. Brad Jones all over the back of Jimmy Richards. Now, one of the things these cars suffer from, of course, is braking problems. They're big cars, and you can see by these chicanes, a lot of effort on brakes. And the corners are basically stop-go corners, and they're a, you know, a, they're a car that uh, is really going to punish brakes over 15 laps. Don't got... the V8 sound sensational around here. And look at this, Bradley Jones already up the inside there, coming into the area towards the back of the track. I don't know that Bradley's done a very nice job with Jimmy Richards there. Brad Jones coming up one place there with a good passing manoeuvre under brakes. Jimmy Richards not the easiest bloke that uh, you get around that way and Brad Jones opens up a little bit of buffer but look at Charlie O'Brien he's got plenty of legs as he runs down that beachfront the most famous strip of sand in Australia and they uh, are really howling down there at some big miles an hour so Bradley Jones has his problems all over the weekend with both the Oscar and the NASCAR sitting in second place now and snapping after Charlie O'Brien the Ford Thunderbird made a lot of power in the United States last year with Alan Kowicki taking down the championship it looks as though Charlie O'Brien has taken advantage of what those guys learned yeah Fords are running hot at the moment there's no doubt about that great shot there you see the storm surf from Cyclone Roger still happening here and that's what's causing this little bit of dampness and moisture around well Bradley Jones has keep doing a good job keeping Jimmy Richards at bay Richards closes up now but Brad Jones in a great uh, part of the circuit for him because at least that way he can drive defensively well it seems oops there's a car under steering straight into the wall there and uh, I would expect we'll see a yellow flag incident 23 into the wall Doug Taylor that's the American driver it certainly is Doug Taylor from the United States. Very fast in practice, qualified up near the pole. The Oldsmobile Cutler Supreme not looking uh, too good at the moment. Yeah, but you can see there when he got underway, he started to work the wheel to make sure everything was working okay. So that shouldn't be a problem for the race. Charlie O'Brien still holding a pretty commanding lead now. Jimmy Richards comes down behind him, but where's Brad Jones? Brad Jones is gone. Into the pits. Brad Jones is into the pits. Well, his bad luck continues, doesn't it? What rotten luck for Brad Jones. Brad, Brad Jones complained of uh, power problems yesterday. Bradley Jones, Peter here, can you hear me? Oh, hi, Brocky. Oh, I don't know what's going wrong. It seems like it feels like it's gone flat. So put the bonnet down. So uh, they can't find out what's wrong with it. I'll uh, go and see if I can uh, do a couple of laps. OK, just see if you can just sort of uh, restore something for the weekend, I think, mate. So, bad luck there from Brad Jones. Nothing's gone right. No, no, we're not going anywhere. And Pete, sometimes uh, you find things that happen here when it starts Someone to go bad, back. everything goes bad. Yeah, Bradley Jones has uh, mentioned then over the air he's not going anywhere. So, that's Bradley Jones out. Well, now, this makes things interesting. Charlie O'Brien doing a great job in the Ford Thunderbird out in front of Jimmy Richards in the Pontiac. Round they come. Charlie O'Brien using all the track and then some. Who's third? Who's third? Who's third? Up into third comes Kim Jane in the Pontiac Grand Prix. Kim also took a third place out uh, two years ago here, Darrell. Yeah, Kim Jane. Well, the fluctuations of these races over 15 laps, you expect a couple of bingles, you expect a yellow flag, but at the moment we've got a pretty clean race going on. We'll try and pick up the progress of Alan Grice for you throughout this race. He started right from the back of the grid and a lot of traffic to get through. At the moment, though, plenty of buffer from all of these cars. Jimmy Richards doesn't seem to be able to get into contact with uh, Charlie O'Brien at the moment and Kim Jane just hanging back a little too. I think that Richo seemed to have that little bit of a problem earlier on when Jones got through, but right now he seems to be closing the gap or at least uh, it doesn't look like he's nursing a problem. The car's looking pretty strong. Jimmy Richards never... Oh! Another big spin there coming out of the beach front. Two or three cars involved. Oh, car number 11. That's He's Robin hit the Best. Wall. That's Robin Best, two-time champion. The other one was car 91. It was Giles. 55 there also. George Elliott in the Chevy. He's had a lose. Well, it's all starting to happen now. Maybe there's a little bit of moisture around on the track. Grice is in sixth place. Grice, Alan Grice up to sixth place from the rear of the grid. Grice, he'll get in contact over this distance, I would think. Yes, Alan Grice, I think we can expect to be uh, certainly uh, attacking probably Kim Jane in the next couple of laps. You see Kim Jane just drawing back a little there. Well, it's a 
Well, Robin Best was uh, pretty unlucky to get caught up in all that, but uh, that's NASCAR racing at this very tight track. John Faulkner also involved in that collision. Gerald, you might just talk about some of the cars we're seeing here for people watching this right around Australia. We're talking about Ford Thunderbirds, Pontiacs, Chevy Luminous. They're all new names to us. They certainly are, but they're the uh, agreed-on makes and models for NASCAR racing in the United States. OK, stand by Australia, coming back as Jimmy Richards starts to make the close. We'll be back shortly. wherever you're watching us right around Australia. Five of 15, O'Brien, Richards, Jane, Alan Grace from the rear of the grid and really on the charge. Graham and Dunsley. But look at this, Jimmy Richards all over the back of Charlie O'Brien. Plenty of time to go yet. Alan Grice and his aggressive vest here. And we'll get a shot of him in a moment. But Jimmy Richards climbing all over Charlie O'Brien. But O'Brien's car's fast at this part of the circuit. Yeah, Charlie's driving a very heady race. He seems to be squeezing the brakes on. We've talked about brakes with his big cars, and they are a factor. The drivers have to use all their skill and knowledge to nurse the cars around. But look at uh, Charlie's down the front straight. Jimmy Richards closing up on the brakes. He certainly is. He's right on the back bumper of Charlie O'Brien. The big Ford, a lot more power down the main straight, sir. Jimmy Richards, look at this, has a look, puts a nose there, says, that's where I am, Charlie, have a little look, I'm coming to get you. <laughs> and Charlie, obviously slowing everything down a little, because look at Kim Jane there, now in first spot, really knocking on the door behind Richard. Richard, I'll now be looking in the mirror saying, well, hang on a minute, I want to pass Charlie O'Brien, but I don't want to let the other guys through. And exactly. here comes Gricey as well. Gricey joins the train. Well, this has been a great ride from Alan Grice. Doesn't he love it round here, round the walls? Loves the V8 and the brothers, Jimmy Richards, puts the nose in here. This could be a drag up, but he just loses a bit of pace. That car park there didn't help him. Kim Jane comes up. Look at Grice, trying to get into the slipstream now and get up a little closer. But Charlie O'Brien's still got the power. The Ford really has the power, but here comes Jimmy Richards on the inside and takes the lead going through the back. Chicane Grice, he's lost it. Oh, bad luck for Alan Grice. Has the big spin after coming all of that way through the field. Unbelievable. Let's hope he can get underway. Jimmy Richards down. The real neat pace pass underneath. Gets the money there. Look already, he's opened a gap up on Charlie. My belief is that Charlie O'Brien is suffering from a uh, braking problem or he's, he's thrown, decided to be a little bit cautious because uh, Richo did that very easily. Look at Richo, straight through the inside, kept the nice tight line. Charlie couldn't compete, and we've seen the Grice come down there absolutely sideways with uh, John Faulkner, who was also coming through the pack fantastically and uh, created a bit of a problem for both, but they'll get going. Oh, that's a shame for Alan Grice. Gee, that's been a drive. I mean, we just love him when he's in that frame of mind. Absolutely, you know, a very, very aggressive driver and well suited to the, uh, the rigours of uh, this sort of tight street racing where you really, uh, you need to be, have very good car control, you need to bounce the car over the kerbs and you need to uh, have a lot of confidence. But also John Faulkner there uh, started behind Grice actually in, that, in, in this race and he's done an exceptional job to be dicing with Grice too. About the halfway mark, 7 of 15, how hard Gerald are these to drive around a circuit like this? Well, Daryl, they're designed basically for oval racing. Many teams in the United States run both a, uh, a circuit car and oval cars. It's slightly different in their setups, or major differences. In Australia, not many of the guys can afford more than uh, one car, so there's, uh, there's a lot of things taking place. Plenty of smoke coming out of there, so oh, Gracie, that's the accident. That's the result. He goes round again. When you can see now the bodywork jammed down in on the suspension area of the car, I'd say that's his second spin. That's going to put the pay to his race, I would think. Yes, I'd say Grice has got no option to come back into the pits now. He, uh, you can see him smoke the tyres up once he got going. Left and front wheel in disarray. Uh, and uh, Grice, of course, not willing to give in too easy. But you can see the smoke pouring off it there. I'll have to call the pits and adjust that car. So Alan Grice back in the pits. And what a shame. <laughs> Gee whiz, what a drive from Alan Grice. There it is. The hood up, not the way we like to see the king of the Akubras, but uh, they're trying to get him back on the track. At least he can get a few more laps in, perhaps. But Jimmy Richards has been driving the Oscar with so much finesse, doing the same thing. He's a driver's driver, this fella, Pete. He's fantastic. And, uh, you know, Richo just hops into these cars and just gets the feel of them, looks at the circuit, gets the feel of the circuit, matches the whole thing up and gets out there and puts on a display like this now. It's not simply a matter of going out there and doing one Banzai lap. 
mean, Richo is in the motor car, which is quite well set up. It's not the most powerful, as we've seen. Whoops. Oh, car oh, six for the big spinner. John was... Laws, not the radio, John Laws. Probably, I bet he's on the radio now, saying, am I OK? Am I OK? <laughs> but uh, certainly Richo there, now he's got a gap. You can see Charlie O'Brien settled down behind him. And uh, we'll just wait to see how that does pan out. But uh, Richo's got about, a, I suppose, a two and a half second gap, pulling away and looking very, very good. I'd like to see P. Brock in one of these. I'd actually love to have a drive of one of these cars around here. They, they uh, are like, a bit like our Group A cars, a bit like a sports sedan. Uh, the boys all tell me they're not particularly evil to drive around here. They've got the uh, road racing experience, of course, to set them up properly. I can see Gerald's by working overtime. I reckon there'll be a car for Brock here next year. I, I think so. I think Bob Jane would find one pretty quick. Oh, 55 again, George Elliott bangs and smacks the wall. Oh, 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 what it happens here. Let me tell you, they go off quick. And well, we I should be laughing about the poor George's misfortune. No, it's pretty look, expensive. Look, I've got absolutely no doubt that the, a lot of these altercations are caused by the uh, braking performance of the car diminishing. They've got uh, water brakes on them, which are basically, for the uninitiated, are a water spray ducted down through the uh, brake duct and uh, it drops, does drop the brake temperature by about 50 degrees centigrade but look at the panel damage on some of these cars that's taylor's car and boy oh boy he's still pressing on but i would say that uh, it doesn't look all that good unbelievable isn't it i mean when you look at this uh, there we go this is for fifth and, uh, and sixth those positions there so taylor had that shot and he's still competitive he's still in the top six well, there's no smoke coming off the tyre, and as long as he keeps an eye on that, as long as the fender isn't uh, going to damage the right-hand front tyre, press on. Look at this, too. The red car behind him. There's bits and pieces hanging off this. All the panel beaters around the Gold Coast will be rubbing their hands with glee. Of course, these cars are built on a space of frame chassis, so uh, the panel damage is obviously very superficial. Well, yeah, the Giles car looking very second-hand there. He's got the right sponsor there for a quick respray, but uh, a bit like Simmons Plains a couple of weeks ago. All right, so the NASCARs are doing a bit of headbutting around the walls here of uh, the streets of Surface Paradise. Great action coming your way, fantastic pictures. We'll be back, Australia. Stay with us back shortly. Australia, 10 of 15, Jimmy Richards still doing a fine job out in front, Charlie O'Brien squeezing the gap a little, Faulkner with a great drive now in third, Dumsney, Taylor Cook, they're the top runners, Alan Grice is back on the track, we should see some fireworks for them, but Jimmy Richards under control at the moment, this is the 93 IndyCar Grand Prix live from Surfers Paradise. There's first, second and third coming through the screen now, the, the, the car in third position is John Faulkner who had a spin before with Alan Grice and has got back into contention uh, and really seems to be closing the gap on Charlie O'Brien. Now, Charlie himself is only about a second and a half behind Jim Richards, so all in all, things could still happen. They're coming into a traffic situation. That's going to help close this gap up a little bit. Big welcome right around New Zealand, too. Nice to have the Kiwis aboard here at Surface Paradise through Channel 3 over there. And, of course, we were there to do the Wellington Streetways, Brocky, and, uh, gee, you've got a few fans over there. And loved it over there, to Darrell, and I must say that they uh, were quite impressed with the Darrell East Lake style of commentary, too. Well, here we go now. Jimmy Richards almost just kissing the wall leg. It's a little sideways. Yes, Jimmy Richards trying to emulate what Charlie O'Brien did here two years ago, take out both the NASCAR and the Oscar. That'd be big for New Zealand. Charles Stewart in the pits. Thanks. Uh, yes, Darrell, a very quick report on Alan Grice's condition. Apparently what happened is when he spun, he snapped one of the front brake lines. That caused the second spin. He's come in, they've clamped the one of the front brake lines, so now he's back out there with three operating brakes. No doubt about Grice, he'll drive anything, won't he? Yeah, I've been in a track myself and it's very dicey, I can tell you, running on three brakes, but uh, still, uh, if you drive for the uh, experience, using all the experience that the Alan Grice has obviously got, uh, he's out there and he's having a bit of a go, but the, the real story of the race is Jimmy Richards, you see the right-hand front wheel just locking up momentarily there as he's going into that uh, chicane, and that's because Richard is going in there with just trailing brakes, because the hardest part of that corner is the, is the right hand. And, uh, you know, he's doing it as smoothly, as neatly, as economically as he possibly can. Well, Johnny Faulkner's car, we've just got a little bit of smoke coming out of that. So uh, let's hope he can keep it together because he's had a spin, had a bit of biff and barge with Alan Grice. He's worked his way up into third place. Looking at Barry Blake's Buick there, nicely turned out. There's some great paint jobs on these NASCARs. And I'll tell you what, the pit crews and the people who put these cars together after every race and keep them going, they do a great job. 
absolutely fabulous job as Charlie O'Brien passes Blake coming up the back straight Jimmy Richards still in control Jimmy Richards now at the end of the main straight there on the beach front goes in uh, nicely into the corner you can see just the change of direction but the car does seem to be handling pretty well and Charlie's starting to come back maybe the problem he had is uh, fixing itself well, they've now pulled well away oh, from... Oh, Taylor Mark again. Walker. Sorry, Pete Taylor. With a lot of smoke out of his car. Geez, had a, a pretty heavy race. <laughs> he's, he's had a... Kissed a few walls around Seven Paradise. There's no doubt about that. And seems to be having problems with the, uh, the left-hand front wheel area there. Whether it's uh, body work or brake problems, I'm not too sure. But uh, possibly brake problems. Yeah, the American. He's come a long way to race the streets of surface. He certainly has an, a lot of uh, short track experience in the United States. Driving for Ian Thomas. He'd be used to driving a car that wasn't quite right. Oh, certainly, yes, no doubt about that. Max Dumsney, we see here in the Valvoline car, back to Jimmy Richards. Dumsney circulating well and also a, uh, a sprint car racer. But it's all Jimmy Richards at the moment, and it's all blue skies and sunshine here at Surface Paradise. So that's good news for everybody. The rainstorm that we had here a little while ago has gone. And uh, from the NASCAR's point of view, I think they're pretty happy about that too. It's a big worry how these monsters were going to handle a greasy wet track. But Jimmy Richards handling it pretty well at the moment. Just coming through the chicane, you can see the way he uses all of the track up. Keeps away from the walls. 12 or 15, he's only going to do it for another three laps or so. Forker has been black flagged for smoking in third, so now the race becomes interesting. It's always a race for Trish in here. It certainly is, and uh, blokes like Richo and Charlie O'Brien, for that matter, are really showing their class. They both get into a bit of a groove, drive around, get into a pattern, smooth on with the brakes, shift down very neatly, the right apex there, nice smooth exit, Charlie on with the power, squeezing the power down, and that's the sort of driving that uh, gives you consistency and good race results. Pete, being realistic, can Charlie O'Brien get back in touch with Jimmy Richards with the time left in this race? There's no, the gap. There's no way he could do that unless Richards develops a problem. If Charlie was bargaining on Richards developing a braking problem, uh, well, possibly that is so. But uh, it looks to me like Jim has now got the pressure off. You can afford to drive uh, according to your own plans and not what uh, you've been pressured into. I'd say Charlie O'Brien really has to be content with second place and said, unless something happens. Just noticed Doug Taylor, the American, back into the pit area, so it looks as though his uh, race is run for the weekend. And look at that shot down there through the chicane. Plenty of people out on the streets of Surface Paradise. Not so many on the beach for change. They're all here hanging out of high-rise buildings and looking at this fantastic race circuit. It is one of the best in the world without question. It's a great track, there's no doubt about it. It's got speed, it's got fast straights, it's got the speed down here that, uh, for instance, the fans can look at it and say, that car's doing 145 mile an hour. It's not mucking around. And then you've got the very twisty bits. It's a, it's a track which uh, really calls upon the brakes and other mechanical components. So it's testing the driver, it's testing the car, and it's a great street circuit, there's no doubt about well, that. Well, Peter had it's not because, you know, I mean, a lot of people said it couldn't happen, but I think it's a wonderful addition to the world calendar. Ah, oh, yes, and, uh, you know, as far as Surface Paradise is concerned, we would hope that this is putting Surface to Paradise on the map, that people looking at this saying, uh, the wonderful, sunny uh, Queensland, let's go there for, for a holiday, and uh, at the same time, watch people like Jimmy Richards get out there and show how it's done. And Jimmy Richards doing a great job here as he just squeezes up to Elliot in the uh, chicane area there. Now he blasts away, will blast away, come back to the closing stages. Don't leave us. Johnny Faulkner, who was going so well from the rear of the grid, came right up into third place, and he's got a lot of panel damage on the front and the rear of the car. You can see him explaining it there to his uh, crew chief. Richards O'Brien, Dumsey Giles, uh, Gross and Cook are the top runners for you. Bad luck to Johnny Faulkner, but a good drive anyway. There's some of the panel damage that they're looking at now, but they'll real build them. They bash them and they build them. Back to uh, the streets of Surface Paradise for the closing stages of this race. It's been a good performance, not only from Jimmy Richards in front, but Max Dumsby. Max Dumsby has done very well indeed. Also won the last uh, meeting at the Calder Park Thunderdome, as well as the quit series for the uh, sprint cars this year. So have a good year. Charlie O'Brien, the boy from the Gold Coast. Bought in a 15, he was very keen to win up here, Charlie. He thought, uh, he's, as Peter Brock said, he probably drives around these streets day after day, making sure that come race day, he knows what it's all about. He led for a while, but seemed to have a horsepower problem. Jimmy Richards, no problems at all. Look at the car.
not even a mark on it. No, Richo's had a very clean race, and uh, you see the gap back to Charlie O'Brien there. This is the last lap, and uh, Richo be now wondering, uh, well, the brake's only going to work a few more corners, and he's squeezing them on down, shifting down through the gears very neatly and quietly, just kissing the curb. Very clean exit, power on early, and a nice clean entry into this next little chicane. Richo is a very economical driver, very skillful, very smooth, and you can see that sort of skill coming through here as he just leaves the field spread eagle behind him. Well, those people watching us through Channel 3 over in New Zealand, it'd be nice to see some New Zealand NASCARs get together. That would make uh, things pretty well. I mean, the Kiwis love their motorsport. Well, it looks as though everything is going to plan for a uh, NASCAR and Oscar race in New Zealand in May. And uh, Jimmy Richards would, I think, would be leading the charge. No doubt about that. Leading the charge here at Surface Paradise as he makes his way up the very famous straight that borders the beachfront there. So many people from all over Australia, all over the world, come to this part of the world for holidays. No holiday here for Charlie O'Brien in second place. He was keen to win this race. Jimmy Richards took him under brakes up in this area of the circuit. And he hasn't lost the lead from then. So Jimmy Richards, as we said yesterday, can drive a nail into a hard piece of timber, this fellow. Doesn't matter what you put him in, he's always competitive, always clean and tidy, and very rarely scratches a car. Now, that's a great shot down at the chicane. There's the high-rise canyons, there's the storm surf, and there's the NASCAR. All happens here. It certainly does, and uh, Richo now looking very, very close to uh, finishing time. He's just got a couple of more corners to go, this little tight section. He won't be bothered about the guy in front. He'll be sitting back there saying, I've got a nice buffer behind. I'll just take it easy here, and I'll keep it very, very straight and clean. So, Jimmy Richards down the Breaker Street part of this circuit. That's the link up from the uh, long straight down the beachfront we just had a look at, back onto the Gold Coast Highway. Rowdy comes down. Remember Alan Grice had a big moment on this corner a couple of years ago in practice. Sensational stuff. But Jimmy Richards, no moments. No problem here. He's practiced everything perfectly. Makes his way down the chequered flag. Should be out. Just waiting for it, he takes the checkered flag now, so Jimmy Richards. And second place, and not that far back, was Charlie O'Brien. And uh, Charlie O'Brien in the Ford Thunderbird, Jimmy Richards in the Pontiac. Then we've got Max Dumsey. Well done, Max. A good drive from Giles, Gross and Taylor. Can't believe where Taylor finished. He just about destroyed everything, got his car. Gee, that was a good one, though, wasn't it? 